Good afternoon. Is that the Postal Service? Oh, wonderful. Well, now the reason for my call is that I keep receiving my neighbour's post. Uh, well, you see, uh, we both happen to be Mr. Smith, except I live at 15A Nelson Gardens, and he lives at 15B. <laughs> oh, uh, I see. Um, when will he be back? Okay. Uh, no problem, I'll, I'll call again. Thank you. Oh, can't believe Arthur has angina. Oh, uh, he'll be here any minute. Yes, uh, everything looks fine. Uh, So, if you don't mind, I'll just watch the telly then. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Could you turn the volume down, please? How is this love supposed to work? I'm sorry. No, uh, it's, it's a creative thing, Dad. I'm just speaking out loud. Okay. How's any love supposed to work, she asked. My darling, my angel. My love for you is stronger than a... Stronger than a... I am good, eh? No, Dad, look, please. <laughs> my love for you is stronger than... Superman! God's sakes, Dad. Seriously. Do you mind? The smallest interruption could change the whole narrative of my story. Now, my love for you is stronger than... God! Answer that. Oh, Grace, hello, sweetheart! Hi, Dad! Grace. Is that all you say after a whole year? Hi, Grace. Nice coat. Uh, is uh, Ryan not with you, sweetheart? No. Uh, he's unavailable. Oh. Yes. So what are you writing then, Edward? Please, Grace, I have writer's block. Uh, did you get Edward's last book? Yeah, I got it in the post. Oh, what did you think? I think it's a very good prop if you've got a wonky table. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, would anyone uh, like a drink? Oh, I thought you'd never ask, Dad. Another cup of tea? Okay. Uh, just uh, some water for me, old man. Actually, make us a sandwich or something. Will you? I'm starving. Okay, uh, cheese and ham? Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, I'll have one of those too. <laughs> so, whole year gone by? What have you been up to? Are you really interested or just making conversation? I don't know. Very well. If you'll excuse me, I have an important story to be getting on with. If I don't get this done in one month, my contract is doomed. Mm, nasty. Yes. It's terrible. Indeed. So why don't you get it finished then? Grace! You talking to me won't help, okay? <clears throat> I have to be under a lot of pressure at the moment, and I have to have a very small, oh, what do you call it? Penis? <laughs> no. 
I have to have a very short deadline. If I don't get this done, my publisher will kill me, okay? I'm surprised you're still doing this writing malarkey. Well, at least I'm not a part-time prostitute. Beauty therapy is not prostitution. So, do you have a girlfriend? No. Boyfriend? <laughs> no, look, to be honest, I'm just not bothered. What do you mean you're not bothered? I don't know, I think I might be a sexual. A sexual what? No, asexual. It means I don't have any interest in, you know. No, I don't know. Carnal knowledge. Oh, yeah, I'm crap at board games too. No, <laughs> sex, Grace. <laughs> sex, I don't have any interest in it at all. Why does that work? Can we just change the subject, please? Okay. So do you think Adam will come over this year? No, uh, probably not. Why? It's not rocket science, is it? Adam's too busy playing fancy doctor with his patients and his loving wife and happy-go-lucky status. But from what I've seen online, I wouldn't be surprised if he's getting divorced. Oh, Grace, God sakes, you are so negative. Believe me, Adam is fine. Patricia is fine. They have a perfectly happy marriage. Patricia kicked me out. Oh, Terrible. I'm sorry to hear that, Adam. Really? Okay, well, how about you? Yeah, fine. Adam? Yet? How's Patricia? She's fine. She was divorced and kicked me out. But never you mind. Do you mind? I'm trying to write. Well, oh, I'm not stopping you. I'm just relaxing in my chakras. Anyway, where's that Ryan? He's not around anymore. Uh, gave you the elbow, did he? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, touch it. Look, what difference does it make to you? You don't care anyway. Uh, here we go. Oh, where's the sandwiches? Well, they're coming. Oh, Adam, great to see you. Uh, um. <laughs> So, uh, how have you been for the last year? Fine. Dad, I take it this water was filtered. No, tap. Tap? Bloody hell, Dad, I could get Legionnaire's disease drinking this. Oh, well, at least you're dying here, bro. <laughs> so, uh, anything new, Adam? No, nothing. Okay, uh, well, um, how's Patricia? Yeah. It's not that. I'm minding my stuff to myself. Okay, I can do that. Here, give me a second. So you didn't want to tell him about Patricia? No. So I get this week over and done with, and we can all get on with our lives. Oh, I was looking forward to seeing you all. Really? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's not really been the same since Mum. It's funny, isn't it? Now that Dad's retired, he's got all this time in his hands, but I just don't feel like I needed any of it. I suppose I just gave up on family. Well, I guess that explains why you never came to my wedding. Oh, come on, guys. Not this again. You see it like it's a bad thing. It is a bad thing! Look, I probably wouldn't see you at all if I didn't need to. Oh, fine! Why? I feel the same! Yeah, fine. I hate you both as well. desperately need to get my story finished, so I'll be writing quite a bit. Oh, I see. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll be seeing my publisher in the morning, and then in the afternoon I'll be here, writing, all day. Well, my office is very far, so I'll be seeing all my patients here, all day. What? Yeah, I've got tomorrow, but no. Oh, God. I'm only working a couple of days this week. 
Well, as long as we respect each other's boundaries, I suppose. Anyway, can you guys help me get some stuff up my car? Yeah, fine. And you, sweetheart. I'll just see if I need a hand. Right. April the 3rd. Today, all three of my kids turned up to see me and stay for my birthday. As usual, they fight. They bicker, and we remain only on paper as a family. God, it was so easy when I used to work and Suzanne looked after them. I've never been a great host. Not as great as she was. It's a pity about Mr. Smith upstairs having a dodgy heart. I hope he gets better soon. As for me, I really wish I knew what was really going on in my kids' lives. I was once a private investigator, so there are ways I can find out. End of entry. Morning, Gwen. That complete prick turned up yet? There he has. All right, send him in. Edward. Ah, oh, my favourite writer. <laughs> Take a seat. Now, Edward, darling, is there anything I can get to you? Oh, no, thank you. Okay. All right. So, no pressure at all. But I was just wondering how you were getting along with your little assignment. Oh, well, I, um, I have a little bit of writer's block. Right, OK. So I, um, I suggest you unblock yourself <laughs> before I have you fired and thrown into the street. What just happened to no pressure? That was before I knew you had writer's block, Edward. Do you know how much... I stand to lose if I don't meet the schedule date. But I can't just magic a story together. I've been struggling with family problems. What sort of family problems, Edward? Well, my family, they're a problem. <sighs> just get it finished, Edward. I do not have time for this. Look, oh, oh, come on, Janice, I'm really stressed out. Please understand. Well, if you're stressed, Edward, that makes all the difference, doesn't it? Thank you, Jess. Thank you so much. No problem. Go home. Take it easy. Have a nice rest. And while you're resting, finish the book. But I told you I can't. And I told you that I need a book. And if you fail to bring it to me, I shall have a boulder tied to your ankle and throw you in the River Thames. What do you recommend? Write about something you know, Edward. As I keep telling you, I have writer's block. There you go. Write about a man that has writer's block. It's easy. Was it? Okay. So, what happens to this man? His house gets hit by an avalanche. An avalanche? Yes. And he lives in a cabin in Alaska. Alaska? Yes. Okay, and then what happens? Right, okay. So, 
after surviving such a tragic catastrophe, <laughs> he no longer has writer's block. I hope you don't mind the number of criticism. Of course not. Okay. Well, I have to admit, um, Janice, I think that story is probably the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. <laughs> you don't like it, Edward. But what is there to like about it? You're saying there's a writer who's struggling to finish his story when a great avalanche comes down, smashing his house to smithereens, and his first thought is, hey, maybe the man he dies at the end. Well, I suppose it's a good thing that you're supposed to be the creative then, isn't it? How long do I have then? One month. Good day, Edward. I told you, I'm bereft of inspiration. I do not care if you have to kill Bambi. Just get it finished. You are a cold... Cold bastard! Flattery will get you nowhere, Edward! Talk to her upstairs. Oh, I can't get signal upstairs. Trace. Hey, please, Grace. Fine. Look, Trace, I'll have to call you back later. Okay. For no. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> well, as I was saying, I've got this friend. And ever since my marriage broke up, he's been having a bit of a hard time. You'd be having a hard time. Yes. You were talking about a violent incident. Well, in my previous living arrangements, I... Well... It's okay, Dr. Kay. Tell me what happened. Well, after my divorce, I moved into a flat. There was a couple living next door. Hello? Oh, hello, Josie. Who are you, love? It's been ages. Oh, no, how's the kids? Grace! Oh, oh that's really sweet. I'm sorry, you can't be helped. Hi, Josie. Look, apparently I can't talk right now, so I'll have to call you back later. All right now, bye. Thank you. <sighs> Tell me, excuse me. Please do continue, Doctor. Well, I have this friend. Doctor Kack, I'm only here to help you, so please try and balance me. Okay. My neighbours have violent arguments. One night, I called the police, but there was nothing I could do. It was too late. My neighbour killed his wife. I was so scared. So, you're blaming yourself for her murder? Yes. And how does that affect you? Well, I found myself drinking more. 
her bars mostly, but it now seems every time I hear anything that reminds her of that brutal night, hey, I can't help it. My friend places a bag over his head. Well, as long as you get over a great trial, you're overwhelmed with a feeling of guilt. But, Dr. Pepper, it's very important for you to realise it was out of your hands. Now, I want you to breathe. Inhale. And exhale. And know that you're like a feather in a summer breeze, in a tranquil, peaceful, what a complete bitch! I don't care if Emma's with John Wayne. I'm way too angry to keep this bottle up. It's okay, Dr. Kelly, come on. Breathe. You're in a safe, quiet environment. You won't believe what I tell you. Horse of a woman I call my publisher said to me. Yeah, she's only given me one month, Grace. One month! <laughs> Dr. Carrick. Well, if you're fine, keep the noise down. It's not me, it's him. What have I done? You upset my client, that's what. Oh, I'm so sorry, Your Majesty. Why don't I just bend over now and let you kick me up the back side while you're at it? There's no need for aggression. Oh, 
Tommy, you live in Scotland. I know you resent me for getting Patricia when we were teenagers. She chose me. We need to get over that. But now, we're getting a divorce. And would you like to know why we're getting a divorce? No, I don't want to know. You know what? It doesn't even matter anyway. Why would that be? Oh, he's got that weird disease where he don't like ball games or sex. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's frigid. Chris, I'm not, I'm not frigid. I'm just not bothered. You know, I can't decide whether you're either really stupid or just rude. How am I rude? You always cut me off halfway through a sentence. That is rude. Hey, did you Where's know? Never cut into your sentence. You always cut me off. Half... I do cut into the sentence. You are always cut me off. Thank half... you. The Chris, you oh, just shut up, Edward. <laughs> well, I get nowhere with this, so let's move on to this one. Edward, you mentioned something about writer's block. Let's talk about that. There's no point. You didn't read my last book. Just talk. Fine. You must know, I've written a heartfelt story called Heart's Desire. It's about this woman in the brutal days of the 1800s who is, she's forced to marry this really evil man to save, to save her family from poverty, and yet she's in love with his brother. Ah. That actually sounds quite good. Thank you. Comedy, is it? How is that a comedy? Um, why is she being forced to marry this man? Why can't she just say no? It's based in the 1800s. Oh, so you mean before Margaret Thatcher? Before? <laughs> yes, Grace. Before Margaret. Anyway, she has to marry this evil man to save her children from poverty. Oh, so she's only had kids with another man? Well, she chucks her back a bit, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, but she just got on the pill. On the pill? <laughs> <laughs> no, Chris, she couldn't go on the pill. And you know what, before you even recommend it, Facebook didn't exist. I know Facebook didn't exist. That's stupid to think I am. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right, so anyway. What makes him, what is it makes him so evil? Okay. She, basically, well, okay, what makes him evil? Um, he is so vile, okay, so dangerous that the whole village fears him and they turn a blind eye when he tortures her. Do you know what she ought to do? What? She ought to get him on that Jeremy Kyle show, that'd sort him out. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Kyle? Yeah, you need to see things like that for a good comedy. I'm not writing a comedy! <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I just. Yeah, just nothing. You always. Have you guys seen this note? It's addressed to Dad. We're sorry to inform you that your condition has worsened, and that consequently, there may only be a few months left. Oh my God! That's our Dad. Come here, Chris. Well, come to this, Dad has a severe case of angina. We have to make sure we keep his heart stress-free and away from anxieties. Well, what do you recommend? Well, for starters, we tell him that everything's okay and that we're happy. So you mean lie to him? Well, according to this, we need to shield his heart from negativity. Think of when he was talking about the man upstairs. Yeah, I thought you were talking about his neighbour. Look, guys, we've got an hour or two to devise a plan. I'm home! Oh, crap! They won't be happy! <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Dad. Uh, Dad, what's, what's in those bags? Oh, I just did some shopping. Oh, God, let me take them for you. Well, if you insist, uh, it's very nice of you. Oh. What? I must say, there's some awfully weird things going on these days. What do you mean, Dad? Well, I'm coming back to the house with my shopping, and about 20 metres from the door, there's a man lying unconscious beside a lamppost. 
That is quite weird. No, that's not weird. It's a pub around the corner, the bull said. There's always drunk people coming out of that place. Yeah, well, the most bizarre thing about this unconscious man, he was lying on the ground with a bag over his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, I need to go get some, get some air. Excuse me. Something I want to tell you. Uh, yeah. We found your letter. Oh, I see. Well, uh, I know well about it. Why didn't you tell us before? No, no I, I should explain. To uh, think we haven't seen Dad in a whole year. I mean, we have to put in more effort from now on. Really? Absolutely. Oh, please have a seat. Dad. That's a half. Uh, so, uh, at my upcoming birthday party. What can we do for you, Dad? Anything at all, Dad. Well, I was thinking we could just have a small gathering, just me, my children, and of course, your beloved partners. Our beloved partners? Well, Dad, uh, Brian is, 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 um... Doing an evening shift. He's an ice cream man. Yeah, he turns <laughs> off. He's now a... Patricia, how is she? Fine. Ah, <laughs> she doesn't want the boss and has kicked me out. <laughs>
Shakespeare? What? <laughs> Grace was just saying that Brian may not be able to make it because she, she doesn't see too much of him nowadays because she's too busy doing an evening course. <laughs> coming along. Uh, yes, very good, thank you, Dad. Oh, that's great. So, what's it about? Okay, the love of God. Okay, it's called Heart's Desire. It's about this woman who has to, has to marry this man, but she's really, really poor. Ah. Well, you know one thing she could do? What? Well, my brother, uh, your Uncle Andrew, Got into a bit of money trouble recently, and Santander gave him quite a good load. Santander! Yes, what? Uh, yes, that's, 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 that's a really good idea. Thank you, Dad. Ah, oh, well, I'm sure it'll be great. I've always loved a good comedy. <laughs> We need to find ourselves a date fast. If we have this, if Dad has this part and we have no one to bring, think of a dreaded consequences. It's depression like this if we finish him off. I still can't believe this has happened to Dad. Well, we need to be really aware with the pressure he's going through causing Dad a mental breakdown. I feel bad now. Why? Well, because before all this happened, I just saw him as an absent minded old git. <laughs> <laughs> And the way he means, and the way he watches those cry jammers one after the other, then falls asleep halfway through them. <laughs> yeah. He does have some irritating habits, doesn't he? Like, what's the obsession he's got with updating his little diary? <laughs> the way he chews like a toothless camel. Would you treat my dad packing my shopping for me? Uh, I do it, but my bones are hurting me. Yeah, of course, Dad. Yes. yes. Oh. They, my dysfunctional kids, have been acting so agreeably. They're actually being nice and even complimented me. Having read the letter addressed to my neighbour, they actually think I have a weak heart to think what must be going through their poor minds. I should tell them the truth immediately. However, let's not forget the insults. Apparently, my choice of TV is boring, and I eat like a camel. Well, okay. I've decided that for the next few days, I'm going to have as much fun with this situation as humanly possible. Mental breakdown, here we come. I should tell them the truth sooner, and put their minds at ease. But I can't. After all, I'm just an absent minded old git. <laughs> End of entry. Hello, Gwen. Yes, it's Edward Smith here. Yes, you please as well. Could you tell me to keep that piece of trunk from the publisher? I'll be there shortly. Thank you so much. I would rather sleep in a bath full of razor blades and exchange words with him. I know he's such a prick, isn't he? Yeah. Send him in, honey. Ah, oh, Janice! Edward, my favourite writer. Take a seat. Oh. Excellent. Now, can I get you anything? Oh, no, thank you. 
I insist, Edward. What would you like? Oh, well, just. <clears throat> Gwen, could you bring Mr. Smith a nice large glass of red? Oh. Now, how's the book coming along? Well, it's, it's, uh, I still got the writer's block. Cancel the, the wine. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want, Edward? Okay, let's just get to the point. I don't like you and you don't like me. I like you a little. Really? No, I don't, I don't suppose I do, no. <laughs> well, I have this situation. Um, it's my dad's birthday party and I need a date for him and I thought, you would come and handy. He's in his late 60s and I thought you could help. <laughs> you want me, me, yeah. to go on a date with a near on 70 year old? <laughs> Is it Jack Nicholson, Edward? <laughs> no, I, I need you to go on a date with me. Darling, <laughs> that particular ship has most definitely sailed. Well. Besides, you don't even like me. You're, you're all right, I suppose. You're all right, I suppose. <laughs> you certainly know how to flatter the ladies, don't you, Edward? Really, you think so? Mm, yes, yes. I've always dreamed of my Mr. Darcy rocking up in the <coughs> casual attire. All right, Janice. You're not my type, but I'm desperate. <laughs> Okay, point taken. Why me, anyway? Well, because you need me to get this story finished, but I can't even concentrate on it until I've pleased my father. What kind of a friggin' sadist is he? He's a sick <laughs> man, Janice. I think we can uh, say that again, Edward. Look, honestly, he's got a serious condition and any bad news could deteriorate his health. He's expecting me to bring some kind of a girlfriend to his birthday party, but I tell you, once that is done, I'm, I'll get that book done. I'll get it finished. Right. Please. Okay. Really? Fine. Get it finished, and get it finished pronto, Edward. Thank you, Janice. I won't forget this. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Vanessa yet? No? Um, okay. Hey, by the way, thanks for finding this office so quick. Thanks, bye. Okay, well that's great. I'll try this match.com that Grace is talking about. So, ooh, tall, blonde, goes by the name of Frank. <laughs> Um, come in. Ah. Hi, Dr. Smith. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> no problem. Trouble with the, the, the tube? No, it's not my mind. I need some help with. <laughs> no, I meant it uh, doesn't matter. So, Vanessa, how can I help you? Well, sometimes I wonder if the world going to end. Okay, there's the chicken or the egg. Who built Stonehenge? Is Elvis really dead? Or became a blonde? Why do I have a well, I think. Eleven toes. Sometimes I could cry. Why was it so weird? Vanessa, why don't we start something a little less crazy? Tell me something about you. Well, I work in a restaurant. Okay, and what do you do in this restaurant? Oh, oh well, I, I used to be a chef, and then somebody had an accident, and I got promoted to a manager. Oh, um, what was the accident? Oh, it was terrible. I had Jackie caught his head in the fridge door. <laughs> Fifteen times. <laughs> and also now divorced. Oh. oh, um, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm not. I tell you, I came home and catching with another lady. He acts all surprised and comes out with the usual garbage. Oh, she doesn't mean anything to me. It's not what you think. Please put the kitchen knife down. <laughs> 
Then what happened? Well, strangely, that bitch! She left by the top floor window, which it wasn't even open. <laughs> <laughs> and my poor, poor husband, he fell down the stairs. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Your husband does. I told you he's a head chef. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, Vanessa, how's how's life for you now? Well, you know, since the voices. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the voices. Yeah, the, you know, the voices. The voices. Yeah, sometimes with the demons come visit me. Usually when I get worked up. Oh, I, I see. <laughs> I've named some of them. Want to see? Fitting me in. That's okay. Been so stressed out recently. Got any plans for the weekend? No. Been up to much lately? No. Are you alright? What do you mean? Well, you come in here, what, is it twice a week? You're usually chirpier than this. Plus, mm. you're, you're quite tense. Am I? Hmm. No, Grace, maybe it's executive stress. Hmm. There's this guy Go on. that I work with, and he's asked me out. Right, what's wrong with him? <laughs> Nothing, I mean, he's creative, mm -hmm. in his mid-thirties. On a scale of one to ten, he's probably about a five, but I mm. mean... <laughs> You can't hope for much more, can you? I know what you mean. Not these days. So, and he's got maybe a little bit of money. 
Okay. But you've got a sick father. Oh, bless him, poor thing. To be honest, I, I think he's a little bit lonely. Oh, he sounds all right. And he's trying to impress his relatives at this party thing. Is he? Yeah. Do you know what? I've got a similar sort of situation. What? Mm, that's really odd. <laughs> what? Maybe, uh, maybe you could go on a date with them. I'll give over. Do you know, I honestly think you'd be well suited. Got quite a bit of money. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, he's like, he's all right looking. Right. And he's a little bit of a celebrity. Sharp. Is he famous? I'd say he's borderline famous, Grace. Yeah. Don't. He wouldn't happen to be uh, Colin Farrell, would he? <laughs> I'd love that. As in, I would be passing him on to you if it was Colin Farrell, yeah, darling. Fair point. <laughs> what do you say? I don't know, it's a bit unprofesh. Unprofesh or not, I'm going to give you his number. Oh, I don't know. And I'm going to set you up. I honestly think you'd be well suited. Oh, if you say so. Sometimes you remind me of him. Oh. I'm going to text it to you, all right? Is that the same one, yeah? Mm -hmm. Cool. Genius. All right, then. You are going to have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a dinner date this evening. Really? That was quick. Yeah, I've got a text from my publisher this morning. Yeah. Wow. How have you been set up on a date with an attractive friend? Well, it's all right for some, isn't it? Yes. I suppose it's safe to have a conversation with Janice. You know, Adam, I'm a little bit concerned. Um, what? Well, I think Dad might have had a bit of a mental breakdown. What? Y yeah, he's... He's been acting really strange lately. He's fine. No, no, really, I, I saw him in the garden a little while ago, actually having an argument with his neighbour's cat. He's fine. Uh, would anyone like some cake? You baked a cake, did you, Dad? Well, I just put some shoes in the oven, but I did remember to add flour. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you okay, Dad? Yeah, of course. Uh, does anyone see my shoes? Oh, God, Dad, what a waste. What's wrong? Perfectly good pair of shoes. My shoes. Ruined. <laughs> this could be worse than I thought. What do you recommend? Well, my mind is a fragile thing. Only time will tell. Some cases of mental breakdown. Some of them think they're dead already. For others, it makes them think they're younger. In the severe cases of mental breakdown, they can sometimes think, they can sometimes revert back to infancy. Hey guys! <laughs> oh my god, Dad, you look like an overage Bart Simpson! <laughs> yeah, don't have a cow, Dad. Did you get it? Because not now. Uh, Dad, what are you looking for? Many of you seen my One Direction CD. You don't have a One Direction CD, Dad. And that? Ah. Dad, what do you intend to do with that board? Well, just let uh, skate around the block for a bit, you know. But some moves, you don't <laughs> mind, do you? I won't be out too late. <laughs> I'm just going to take this for a while. Where's my skateboard? That, Dad, Dad. Come, come, come. Come, come. Come, come. come. come, come. Oh, I sit down. I feel quite tired now. Oh. <laughs> strange. Very strange. Oh, weird. Hi, guys. Oh. Hi Grace, hi Grace. Is that alright? Oh yeah, he's fine, just having a, a little lie down. Okay, well I'd best get yourself ready then. Ready for what? Well, a client of mine has set me up on a romantic evening out with a co-worker of hers. Yeah. Ah, really? Yeah, apparently he's creative, 
in his 30s, quite good looking. Ah, oh, well done, you, Grace. Yeah, thanks very much. I'm going to put on my lipstick. Why didn't you tell her about Dad? No, no, that's just why. Uh, right. I'll keep an eye on Dad and see how he progresses. Right, well, I'm um, ready, ready for my hot day too. <laughs> um, what's that on your head? I was told to wear a pink hat so he'd recognise me. You don't know what he looks like? No, but I know that he'll be carrying a single red rose so I'll be able to spot him. Anyway, I can't stand here all night. I'll see you later. See you later, Grace. Uh, red rose, eh? Oh, it's just something I sort of bring. Ah. So you haven't, you don't know what she looks like? No. But, um, apparently she is very attractive and, uh, I'll be able to spot her. Oh, well, she may be wearing a, a pink hat. Yeah. How did you know? Oh, it's just one of those uh, old romantic cliches. Really? Oh, well. Wish me luck. Oh, <laughs> best of luck, <laughs> <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, commence. Unbelievable! By God, that was quick! I don't want to talk about it. It was some kind of evil joke. Oh my God, I can't feel my hands. I think I'm going to be sick. How does this even happen? Jesus, I can't stop shaking. I'm definitely going to be sick. Just trying to stop. Oh my God, I'm going to be sick. Of all the people she could set me up with. Oh, she chose the most absurd person in the universe. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to be sick. Will you just shut up and be sick already? <laughs> I'm going to give that damn woman a piece of my mind. Oh, you go, sister. <laughs> oh, Grace. Yeah? Where did you go? Uh, did you go on your course? Nope. I didn't go on my course. Oh. So when are you due in? Oh, that's not un until... Um, until... Tomorrow! Tomorrow! <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Tomorrow. Uh, where did Edward go? Oh, I, I think he went upstairs to do a bit of writing or something. Oh. Well, uh, why don't you uh, come and sit next to me? <laughs> okay. Yeah,